Hey guys, it's Katie here with Life the Mundane, and today I'm talking about packing. Woohoo! Packing for a trip with kids. Um, it can be tricky, it can be difficult. Some of this you may already know, some of it you may not, but both with my own children and taking long car trips, and both in my experience as the oldest child of seven kids and taking long car trips with my family, I have a few tips and tricks I'd love to share with you that hopefully will be helpful to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to packing both their clothes and the things that need to go in their suitcase, and also tips for what to pack in the car to make life a little bit easier. So let's get started. So first things first, we have to get ready for the trip before we can go. And I know that is the dreaded part. It can be super stressful, especially for mom, especially when you have younger kids. But no matter how old your kids are, it can still be stressful for packing for a trip. And I know that anything you can do to make it a little bit more streamlined and a little bit easier can help. So I wanna talk a little bit about two different parts. One, the getting ready, packing your clothes and your belongings for the trip. And then the second part is things you can pack in the car to make the trip go a little bit easier or things you should never, ever, ever take a trip without. Make sure you watch to the end to see what that is. But um, first off, just packing clothes and belongings. So the first things first is um, what to pack. So something that I suggest doing, um, my awesome friend Gabby um, gave me this idea. I've heard it from other people before, but she is my inspiration. So shout out to Gabby. Kids, the responsibility of packing. Stop. <laughs> Stop trying to micromanage everything, especially if you have a larger family like I do. It's just not possible. So one thing that she suggested to me was to have a printed out packing list ready to go, hand it over to your kids and have them gather their stuff. Now, this is super important. You must check their bag, especially you know if they're up above a certain age and you wanna teach them natural consequences, that's fine. But if they are probably, you know, 10 and under, um, maybe even a little older, you're definitely gonna wanna double check their bag to make sure they got everything on that list. But she has a super fun printable that um, she makes for her kids. We all go to camp together every year. And so she has a camp checklist. It's already ready to go. It has a few slots at the bottom where you can add extra things that they might need or want. Um, but there are also some great printables online. And I will link those below, but I found some great ones, especially for non-readers, if you have younger kids that have pictures of a t-shirt or a picture of a hoodie or of a dress, whatever it is. And it actually is able to where you can laminate it because you guys know how much I love laminating. You can laminate the sheet, use a dry erase marker and write how many of that item they need to gather. Once they have that together, they check off the box and then mom can come back and check afterwards. But start handing over some of that responsibility to your kids. Let them pack their stuff, gather it together, and let you double check it before it goes into the suitcase. Um, huge help and a great way to teach them responsibility to pack. Another thing is, is how to pack your items in your bag. There's a lot of different options. Obviously, you know, a lot of people do the standard rolling kids clothes, putting in the bag to pack the maximum amount. Um, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I wanna show you a few other options um, that have been helpful to us when it comes to actually organizing the stuff so that when we're on the trip, it doesn't become a nightmare. So one of the things, especially if I'm sending my kids somewhere without me, um, so if I'm sending them to maybe a camp, to grandparents' houses, whatever it might be, a lot of my kids actually run very similar in clothing, but not exactly the same. So if I just pack a bunch of boys' clothes in a bag or a bunch of girls' clothes in a bag, grandma and grandpa may not know whose is what, and it can get really confusing. Also, for the kids, they can tend to you know, mix and match uh, different outfits, which is fine, but sometimes they're gonna be left at the end of the week with a really wacky outfit to wear for church because they use their church shirt on Wednesday to play in the mud, and now all they have is you know, their Darth Vader t-shirt to wear to church. So <laughs> all that to say, when I'm sending my kids without me, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just use a large Ziploc bag, gallon size Ziploc bag, and I will put everything that they need for one day. So underwear, socks, t-shirts, pants, all of that in a Ziploc bag. And I will sometimes, I'll just do it like that. Other times I'll actually label it. So I'll say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. This is an idea I got from my mom. She used to do this for us when she would send us to our grandparents' house. And it was super helpful. The kids can simply grab out the bag. They've got everything ready to go. The big thing with this is if they're gonna be gone for let's just say five days, you have a Monday through Friday bag. That's awesome. Make sure you always pack an extra bag. That's not a sign for a day. 
just because kids are kids and you're probably gonna need something extra. But it makes it really easy and it makes it awesome for when you're trying to sort out stuff in your suitcase. Everything doesn't end up everywhere. At least the clean stuff doesn't end up everywhere. The dirty stuff might. But <laughs> it's something that was super helpful for us to be able to have and be able to grab and go. Another thing that we're just starting to try this year, so this is a little bit new for me, but I'm really excited to give it a try, is I was able to get some of these awesome traveling bags um, as a, an incredible Amazon Lightning deal the other day, and I'm excited to try them out on our upcoming trip to camp, but they come in different colors, so each set is a different color. Each set comes with five bags, ranging anywhere from small, medium, and large. And the great thing about this is we have our kids share suitcases. So we have a boy's suitcase because we have two boys. We have four girls, so we have the middle girl share a suitcase and then the baby share a suitcase. And this is going to be great for keeping their stuff sorted and separated. I've got it by colors. Um, I've got each of their colors and I'm going to be able to sort and separate their stuff so that they're not having to dig through and they don't accidentally end up wearing their sister's underwear or something like that. Not that that's ever happened at our house, but you know. Anyways, so I'm excited about doing that and I will definitely link these below and let you guys know how that goes. But it's just another way to make it just a little bit easier and to cut down on that stress in the moment and to keep, hopefully, all of the clutter from getting everywhere. The other thing I suggest is to put a laundry bag or a trash bag or a Walmart bag, something like that, in your suitcase so as your kids have dirty clothes, Ideally, they can put them in that bag so that when you get home, you have all the dirty clothes separated from the stuff that they didn't wear. Now, we all know kids are kids and they may not do that, but it's really helpful if you can train them young to do that now to make it easier on mom to just throw a load in. So now we have a few tips for how to get them ready and packing their stuff. But now what about the car? There's so many things that you need, right? Wrong. You do not need that much for the car as far as entertainment for your children. And honestly, what we have found, at least personally, everybody's a little bit different, is that the less amount of toys and individual items that we pack, the easier the trip is. The less arguments, the less fighting, because every time your child brings that one special toy with them in the car, that's an opportunity for an argument. <laughs> they are going to fight and bicker over not sharing or playing too loudly or not playing the right thing or whatever it might be. At least in my house, that's the way it works. So a lot of times we try to cut down on the amount of toys they bring. On a regular car trip from, you know, ranging from anywhere from like six to 10 hours, we're talking about two toys. They can bring two toys. Um, they can pick two toys, anything they want. It cannot make noise. That is a big rule. <laughs> I'm not driving for 10 hours with Buzz Lightyear's lightsaber, you know, or with Darth Vader's lightsaber going off in the background. It'll just drive me insane. So no toys that make noise, but they're allowed to bring two toys that they want. A lot of times my kids will pick a stuffed animal or a fig an action figure kind of thing. Um, and then maybe something like a coloring book or an activity book, sticker book, something like that. So they're allowed to bring two things that they enjoy and that they love. This has really helped when they get bored. There's several of them so they can swap and they can trade toys. But the big thing is, is we like to kind of focus more on activities that the whole car can do at one time. Now, obviously there's some times when we want downtime in the car and that's where their toys come in, but um, we try to find things that we can all do. So we love to do audiobooks. If you guys haven't checked it out, I love Audible. You can see my link to my video that I did on that above or below. Um, but I absolutely love Audible for audiobooks, and so we listen to a lot of fun children's books on audio. We also do um, audio adventures like uh, Story Children's Story Hour or Adventures in Odyssey. Um, lots of fun ones like that that even the kids and we enjoy listening to. Um, we do do movies in the car sometimes. We don't have movies in the car at all unless it is a long car trip. But um, on long car trips, we do a lot of movies in the car, and occasionally we'll do that. We also um, will do games in the car. We'll have uh, different kinds of, you know, your traditional license plate game or ABC's game or whatever. There's a whole bunch of them. I will link some below for you to give you ideas, but I'd love to hear what you guys like to do. But we try to keep it a little bit more interactive as a group so that it doesn't become so strenuous. But the other thing, and if you watch my other videos, you know my kids are super artistic. They love doing art and they don't get it from me, but we always like to buy them a new sketchbook before a trip. So we get them just the $2, dollar, whatever sketchbooks, like the dollar, $2 sketchbooks from Walmart. 
and we give that to him. We wait till the morning of the trip or the night before the trip and we give him a brand new sketchbook and a few pencils. We don't pack crayons because they melt, but a few pencils and that will keep them entertained for a long time. They can play um, hangman, they can play tic-tac-toe, they can draw, they can write, they can do whatever creatively, but it seems like that combination, at least for our family, cuts down on the fighting and the bickering and keeps them interested. Never underestimate, another big tip is never underestimate the importance of child placement for a long trip. <laughs> um, certain individuals in your family, especially if you have a bigger family, are probably going to clash or compliment a little bit more. We have two in particular that actually get along so well that they exclude whoever else is in the back seat with them. So we have to either separate them and put someone in between them or put one of them up in the front row and a couple others in the back because if they are together, they are awesome, they're wonderful, they don't fight, they have so much fun together, but they will not include the other child. So anyways, we kind of mix it around. We definitely wanna deal with the hard issues. We definitely wanna take teaching moments. Please don't hear me wrong when I'm saying that. I'm not making excuses, but ideally we want to reduce the amount of um, conflict and frustration for everybody to make it a fun time. So we do spend a lot of time kind of figuring out what's best and we might switch up child placement um, differently than we would on a typical day going to the grocery store. Um, a lot of times too we like to place an older child with a younger child who can help you know if we pass back a you know a sippy cup or food for them to eat we love to have somebody older with somebody younger who can help them open things or you know to throw away the trash or whatever. So what about snacks and drinks? I know that we have we have to bring snacks and drinks. That's one of the best ways to keep kids happy on a car trip. But <laughs> a couple things you may or may not have thought about. Always try and get um, cups or drink pouches or whatever with lids, with closable lids. Less spills, less must, less fuss. I'm um, gonna get snacks that are not super sugary. We do have a few treats occasionally that you know are kind of fun, but we try not to get them too sugary because that gets them all hyper and wound up and they have nowhere to spend that energy except for the car with you for eight to 10 hours or more. Um, we also try to do things that are not super sticky so that we're not making a mess everywhere. I would consider um, adding is a trash bag in the car. Now this might seem kind of standard or normal, to have some kind of bag for trash in the car. But what I have learned is you can really help keep things sort of cleaner and tidier in the car if you give each row of children or each row of even the adults, each row of this the car um, their own trash bag. And again, just a Dylan's bag, Walmart bag, whatever. Um, give them a bag for their trash to go in and that way they're not reliant on picking it up, sending it back and forth to the car. And then at the end of the day or when we get to a gas station, we can just um, dump that out. Last thing, the most important thing, never to go on a car trip without. You ready for it? Puke bags. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have been on several trips both as a mom and as a child with a, with all of a sudden somebody gets sick. It might be car sick, it might be a stomach virus. I know it's gross, I know you don't wanna talk about it or think about it, but it happens way more often than we like to talk about or we like to think about. So always having puke bags is awesome. These are actually like hospital grade puke bags. Awesome little things. Um, anytime we're in the hospital, we will snag a few of those, whether it's for my daughter, for um, different surgical procedures she has, or for me giving labor. They have them readily available. I ask for them. I keep a few extra in my car um, at all times for that kind of thing. But guess what? You don't have to have a super fancy medical grade puke bag. Dylan's bag will do. Just make sure it does not have hold. Um, but it's a super important thing to have with you. There's just a few quick tips and tricks for packing with kids that I hope you found helpful. I'd love to hear what your suggestions are. Drop them in the comments. Like this video if it's been helpful or share it. I would love if you would subscribe to my channel. I post videos every Wednesday and Saturday on making the most of the little moments in homemaking, home management, and parenting, and everything in between. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Talk to you later, bye.